perfect day doesn't require a lot of things. All I need is a really comfy chair, a Diet Coke, and of course a really good book. I could sit and read all day if I had the time. To me, nothing is better than a superbly written novel. I, given the choice, I will always choose reading over anything else, whether it be a Netflix binge sesh or socializing with actual human beings. Unfortunately, the vast majority of the population does not agree with me. According to a 2014 article in Time Magazine by Bijan Steven, the average American spends only 19 minutes a day reading. That's it. 19 minutes out of possible 1,440. That's literally 1%. And some of you are probably sitting here thinking, well, so what? I, I have better things to do. But I can assure you, you don't, because reading is actually really important. According to Gregory McNamee in his 2005 article, Bookman's Holiday Part 1, those used to reading have better psychic armor and a better developed sense of the world than those who are introduced to stories late or not at all. So basically, readers are just overall better adjusted human beings than non-readers. Reading regularly actually has so many benefits, mentally, physically, and emotionally. According to Alice Sullivan in The Lifelong Benefits of Reading for Pleasure, published in 2015, reading can increase brain power and vocabulary. It's a fantastic stress reliever. According to an article published in The Telegraph in 2009 entitled, Reading Can Help Reduce Stress, Reading can reduce stress levels by 68%. Can you imagine being 68% less stressed over finals? It would definitely help. The study also showed that reading reduces stress more than listening to music, drinking tea, or taking a walk. Other benefits of reading include improved empathy, improved mood, and increased creativity. In fact, it has even been found that people who read actually live longer than those who don't. In a study conducted by Avni Bavishi in 2016, published in Social Science and Medicine, book readers experienced a 20% reduction in risk of mortality compared to non-book readers. Yep, that's right. The results said that book readers, yes, they do live longer. And yet, despite all of the advantages of readings, people just aren't doing it anymore. According to data collected in 2016 from Statistic Brain, 42% of college students will never read another book after they graduate. And 80% of American households didn't buy a single book last year. No matter how you look at it, this is a problem. The question is, how do we fix it? Well, the obvious answer is just to read more. But how do we do that? Well, it's up to you. The only way we can get people reading more is if each of us makes an individual effort to do so. Need a little motivation to start reading? Well, according to the article, Why Read, published by Why to Read in 2017, reading makes you more interesting and attractive to other people. So if you're single and you don't really want to be anymore, reading could be the answer. But in all seriousness, there are some really easy strategies to help yourself get reading. According to Brett Blumenthal in her article, 10 Simple Ways to Get Back into Reading Again, published in Chronicle Books, some ways to help yourself Some ways to help yourself get back into reading include going for length, choosing for pleasure, and creating a ritual, among others. By going for length, she means... By going for length, she means reading more than just a couple pages at a time. By reading in more in a single sitting, you allow yourself to fall into the story and you really get into it. It makes picking it back up later that much easier. When choosing a book to read, you really shouldn't pick something that you think you should be reading. You should pick something that you're actually going to like. If you're reading something that you genuinely enjoy, you'll look forward to it, and you'll be that much more likely to do it more often. And if you're not sure what kind of books you might like because you don't really read, I'd suggest thinking about what kind of movies you like and picking something that's kind of similar in the same genre. Creating a ritual could mean a lot of different things to different people. For me, my ritual is just <coughs> reading in bed every night before I go to sleep. For you, it could be reading in the same comfy chair every time or making yourself a hot chocolate. No matter what it is, creating a ritual makes you look forward to reading. That makes you want to do it. By following these simple steps, we could all become readers. If we all made an effort to start reading, we could actually maybe change the world. According to a New York Times article, How Much Do We Love TV by John Coblin, on average, Americans watch more than five hours of TV per day. Imagine what it would be like if instead of spending those five hours watching TV, we used some of it to read. 
Imagine walking through the UU and instead of seeing students procrastinating watching Netflix, you saw them procrastinating with a book. And imagine instead of people saying, oh my god, you have to watch this new show I just finished, people saying, oh my god, you have to read this book I just finished. In a world with readers, we would spend less time becoming zombies in front of TV screens. We would have intelligent and engaging conversations, not just about books, but about everything. We would all have great vocabulary and impeccable grammar. But I think the biggest effect this would have on our world is an incredible increase in empathy. And according to the article Narrative and Neighborliness by Susan Van Zanten, published in 2016, reading does cause people to be more thoughtful of each other. And it makes sense when you think about it, because when we read, we're essentially experiencing the world through another person's eyes. It makes you think about things that you never would have thought to before. I can't tell you how many times I've read a book that has completely changed my way of thinking. When I was younger, I always saw things in black and white. Everything was either good or evil. But then I read a book that was from the perspective of what I thought was the protagonist. At the beginning, she was this sweet, good, innocent girl who had a bunch of horrible things happen to her. But as the book progressed, she kept making these decisions that were horrible and selfish and harmful to other people. And then at the end of the book, it was revealed that she was actually the bad guy the whole time. Reading the book totally changed my perspective on life because for the first time I realized that bad people aren't usually all bad and that a lot of the time people have very good reasons for doing very bad things. Imagine if we all had these kinds of epiphanies all the time, ones where we realize that we aren't always right. Sure, conflict wouldn't disappear completely, of course, but I do believe that it would decrease dramatically. I know my speech isn't going to turn everyone in the world into a reader, but I do hope that it turns a few of you into readers and that you turn a few more people into readers and they too turn a few people more and if every single one of us readers introduces one person to the magic of reading, we could really make a difference. So I encourage all of you, even if you think you hate reading, just try it. Find one book that you might like and just try it. You never know, you might end up actually enjoying it. And even if you don't, hey, at least you might live a couple minutes longer.